Meteorologist Danielle Noyce here for the One Degree Outside Weather Network with your weekend insights. Here's what we're going to cover in this video today. Last October weekend, can you believe it? Fall is flying by. We're going to break down all the details of your Saturday and Sunday so you can make your plans. A lot of buzz about a nor'easter next week. Timing and impacts are uncertain. And we're going to talk about why coming up. Going to give you a sneak peek at what we're keeping an eye on for the middle and end of next week. Just a reminder, you can watch the weather anytime, anywhere with our streaming network of first and only across New England at OneDegreeOutside.live, but also on your smart TV. If you open up the YouTube app, you can watch us that way. Just search One Degree Outside Network, and you can tap to watch at the top of our free weather app. It's the only forecast you need to know, the only weather app you're going to need as well. All right, let's start with the coastal storm next week, kind of give you an overview, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of this upcoming weekend. Why am I showing you a zoomed out view of the West Coast and Alaska? Well, believe it or not, some of the pieces of energy that will feed into our storm next week are actually in the Gulf of Alaska and out in the Central Pacific. There's a big upper level low spinning in the Gulf of Alaska in the next couple of days. These pieces of energy are going to come into the Pacific Northwest, dive into the Central United States. At the same time, there's an area of low pressure moving through the Southern Plains that will continue to spread east slowly. Also in play, another upper level low that's actually spinning in eastern Canada and will retrograde. That means move from east to west over northern New England as we head into the start of next week. So that one, two, three pieces all coming together along with a tap of Atlantic moisture. How all of these pieces interact are going to be the determining factor in the strength, the position, and the timing of the storm. So there are some scenarios where we get areas of rain to fill in on Wednesday and into Thursday, but then some of this energy does linger into the end of next week and next weekend. So obviously Halloween, a lot of cities and towns with trick-or-treating. We're going to keep you posted, of course, but that's why with so many pieces of energy coming together and the tropics, which we'll talk about in a second, there's so much uncertainty. We're still obviously several days out ahead of the storm as well. Until then, we do have an area of low pressure in the Southern Plains, warmth out ahead of it, tapping the Gulf. So areas of showers, thunderstorms are going to spread east for Saturday and Sunday. So an active weekend all the way from Texas stretching into the Tennessee River Valley. Areas of heavy rain, localized flash flooding, and some strong to severe thunder thunderstorms. For Saturday, that risk is greatest from Austin, Texas, to Houston, to Galveston, and then over towards Baton Rouge. And then during the day on Sunday, it's a slightly lower risk, but still from Baton Rouge over to New Orleans, up towards Jackson, Mississippi, and over towards the panhandle of Florida and far southwest portions of Alabama will have a risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms. So relatively speaking, our weather's quiet. Just like the last couple of days, though, we'll have variable clouds. So we may start with some sun Saturday morning. Clouds bubble up. They may produce a couple of showers of both rain and what's this? Yeah, a little bit of blue. We talked about it yesterday. Coating to an inch or so in some of the summits, Mount Washington in there. Far northern Coas County may have a couple snowflakes that mix in, but no accumulation. And then as we head during the day on Sat Sunday, sun and clouds building up, mostly dry. Monday, some coastal clouds. Could be a shower in the cave. That's that energy kind of pinwheeling back towards us with the onshore flow taking hold too. That may mean a lot of clouds during the day on Tuesday and some pockets of drizzle or some showers, particularly in southern and eastern New England during the day on Tuesday. And then as we zoom the view out, here we go. Multiple things going on. Wave of low pressure down to the south. Storm center developing. Energy feeding into it as that trough digs out. So we'll watch the timing of the coastal storm as we head into the middle and end of next week. Meanwhile, tropical storm Melissa, want to talk about her barely moving, literally one mile per hour, stationary, is going to gradually strengthen for our Friday and into Saturday, and then likely to rapidly strengthen over the course of this weekend and take a track kind of curving just south of Jamaica and then curving around the island. Not good news because it stays over the ocean, which has remarkably warm ocean content, fuel for hurricanes to continue to strengthen. So Category 4 National Hurricane Center has it as we head into Tuesday of next week, curving towards Cuba. So Bottom line, this is going to be a big weather headline in the coming days with major hurricane status likely to be attained by Melissa here. Life-threatening mudslides, damaging wind gusts from Jamaica to Cuba, back over towards Hispaniol, Haiti, uh, the Dominican Republic too, and then likely to curve right over Cuba heading into the beginning and middle part of next week. So we'll keep you posted on Melissa as well. 
here at home, highs in the 50s for our Saturday, some 40s in the north. And then overnight Saturday night, it gets chilly. Widespread 30s on the map, some upper 20s in far northern New England with variable clouds. Sunday, similar story. We get sun, then the clouds build in. I'd say either side of about 50 for most of us, and that includes down at Gillette Stadium for the Browns coming to town. Upper 40s to low 50s, that's what you want to dress for. Some breaks of sun, a lot of clouds, wind not an issue. So no weather-related issues for the Pats down at Gillette. Monday, more clouds. There we go, 40s to lower 50s. Again, that onshore breeze kicking up. So essentially a nor'easter here with that wind. 10 to 20 miles per hour on Tuesday, we may see some higher gusts, particularly as that storm center develops and strengthens by the middle part of next week, particularly along the south coast of the Cape. couple of pockets of showers and drizzle likely. So lots to watch in the days to come. We'll likely have some more information on our membership community where we do live streams ahead of storms and give more info, hoping to put out a podcast as well. Check it all out. We've got four membership levels at membership.1degreeoutside.com. Want to give a shout out to our One Degree Outside champions. Gate City Reflexology and Massage, new website, Feel Good Inside and Out, Whole Body Wellness Rooted in Care up in Nashua, New Hampshire, and O'Brien's Garden Center in Danvers, Massachusetts for all of your gardening needs. Thank you so much for your continued support, not only to our One Degree Outside champions, but each and every one of you on this list, which continues to grow. We appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful weekend. Be sure to check in for Weekend Edition Saturday morning.